the idea that a family can live in a single income household today is laughable. TYT's Anna Kasparian debated conservative propagandist Dennis Prager, and it went very well. So I wanna show you a clip from this debate. It was about an hour long, if you include the second half when Jenk came on. But I wanna show you just this one moment because this really helps to explain or, or showcase that even if you agree with Dennis Prager, that he doesn't actually address or raise any solutions for the problems that he claims are big issues. I wanna start off without putting words in your mouth, to show a video of something you said just yesterday on the uh, Dennis Prager show that I thought was fascinating. So let's take a look at that and we'll discuss. The computer sticker phenomenon is crazy. It was actually one of the biggest what, shocks. What does I that had. mean? What does that mean? On your computer right here, people, instead of just having a, a blank. Oh, back, I see. They would so messages. On, yes. It would either and be. And what was the common message? I heart women or um, just the, the female sign, you know, the circle. And Wait, the arrow. I heart women. On a woman's computer? Yes. All of this is proof to me that women need men. These women are manless. They may have hookups, but they're manless. And it, they might have been fatherless too. Ending with my generation, I would say in ending with the, the baby boomers, but on t certainly through then, a young woman thought a lot about, do I have a boyfriend? Mm -hmm. What will my wedding be like? What will I wear? Who will be there? Who will the guy be? That is, that I believe is healthy and normal for a young woman. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. That has been knocked out by, by the, the feminist left. And if you think about it, you're, you're, you're a weak female. Do you think I'm manless well, and lonely? I, was, I, I, I think women that, rock. I said that in general, women need men. And I've said a thousand times that in general, men need women. The fact that that's controversial is a statement about what's happened to our culture. But it goes, I'm going further than that. Because the idea that a family can live in a single income household today is laughable. That is incredibly difficult well, to do. And so while the right wing see, and, and you yourself seem to have this idea that, well, you know, women should focus on marriage, they should focus on building a family. First of all, you can't force anyone to do that, right? But let's say you want to encourage women to focus on that. You want to give them the choice, but you want to encourage them. A great way to encourage them is to create an economic system in which people feel comfortable knowing that they can survive on a single income household. I'm talking about when they're married, okay? Both individuals in a marriage have to work in order to be able to pay their rent, pay their mortgage, put food on the table for their children, educate their children. Wages have remained stagnant since the 1970s. Women don't have a choice as to whether or not they can work or whether or not they should just focus on raising children. They don't have the choice. That's the point I'm trying to make. Right, and we differ on that because the, the reason that many women, not all, but perhaps most even are, are working is not just economic, especially in the, certainly in the upper class, upper middle class, and even part of the middle class. It is because they believe that their self-worth derives more from work than it does from family. All right, so I have a few things to say here. First, I just wanna quickly hit on that last point that Dennis Prager made that women derive their happiness from their work, and that's a bad thing. They shouldn't do that, which is weird coming from him and coming from a conservative in, in general, because these are the same people that claim that everyone's lazy. Nobody wants to work anymore. You have a Dennis Prager uh, tweet here. Entitlement produces lazy, ungrateful people. Earning success through hard work teaches you to be grateful for what you have. Yet, that doesn't apply, I guess, to women, only to men. So <laughs> women stay home, take care of the kids, do the dishes. Men, you go to work. There's just, there's no consistency here on their part. Now, personally, I think that if given the opportunity, most people would not want to be in a job that they despise simply because they have a paycheck. 
most people would want to do something that is fulfilling. Sometimes that may be, you know, an artistic venture. Sometimes it may be something more technical. Whatever it is, a lot of people are currently stuck in jobs that they, for one, a lot of them don't like. Two, are paid way too low. And as Anna uh, brings up, in many cases, both parents, and not many, most cases, both parents have to work to maintain an income for their household, to be able to pay their mortgage off, to be able to afford rent or buy food or raise their children, send them to school. These are, this is the issue that people face now because you have one side completely, not even just ignoring the issues of the working class, but on the actual side of the wealthy and massive corporations in suppressing their wages, in destroying unions. If Dennis Prager actually cared about having the 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 uh, the intact household, the one man working and the woman home, then he would try and do something about raising wages, about having more unions. When you and I've shown these graphs a million times, but if you're new here, the productivity pay gap. So Anna brings this up. So you see here the change from 1979 to 2020. Uh, productivity has gone up 61.8%, while hourly pay has only gone up 17.5%. So productivity has grown 3.5 times as much as pay. And going to the importance of unions in this discussion, union membership and share of income going to the top 10%, 1917 to 2015. You see as union membership declines, share of income going to the top 10% increases, meaning those in the poor and middle class and even upper class are left behind as those at the very top of society continue taking in all the money for themselves. Dennis Prager, if he actually cared about the family unit, he would try and address some of these issues, try and get to the heart of this with policy. Of course, he does not. His job is to simply shame people for living the lives that they choose to live and to, uh, you know, get angry or fear monger about, about secularism and people being able to, again, live their lives in a way that they choose, have the belief system they choose to have and have that to them and not try to push that on everybody else the way Dennis Prager does. Like, who is for actual freedom here? Dennis Prager, who's trying to make everyone have the same lives, live the same lives, have the same families, or people that are on the left that want you to be who you are, be your true self.